So, like, Ryan Hollins isn't good, right? Like, we're all in agreement with that, right? And I, I'm not even saying that in a troll way. I'm not even saying that in a I disagree with everything he says way. It, it's more of a just a fundamental way that Ryan Hollins is bad. It's, it's, it's just, as a dude who argues sports, in my opinion, Ryan Hollins is just bad at it. He's just not good at it. And they keep putting him out there. And I can't take it anymore. And, and my main issues with Ryan Hollins is that he doesn't really use facts, doesn't have a great use of a, of a logic. And, and he kind of just has a habit of combining buzzwords together until they form kind of a hot take. Like what he says sounds like a hot take. It sounds like something that would be controversial and interesting and something that Stephen A. Smith would say, but it's just nonsense. Like it doesn't make sense. You know, it just, it's missing something, right? Like he seems like he's trying to do the whole Stephen A. Smith thing where he just kind of disagrees by default. He just doesn't have the skill or experience of a Stephen A. Smith. So it just kind of kind of makes you cringe when you watch him attempt it. It's just, it's just bad. Like Ryan Hollins is just, he's just bad. And I'm not even trying to hate on the dude. I, I just don't enjoy hearing his takes. And look, I have nothing against him personally. I, I think he's a cool dude. Um, I think his NBA career wasn't that bad. I mean, people rag on how bad of a basketball player he was, but he was in the league for a while. You don't get to stay around because you're garbage. Like, you know, yeah, I, I respect him, you know. He's not that bad in the big three, but but just every time he's on one of these debate shows, it just, it makes me angry. But I could talk all day about how bad Ryan Hollins is, but I'd rather break this down and show it to you. So that's what we're gonna do this week. We're gonna, we're gonna look at some Ryan Hollins hot take. There are some times in basketball where Ryan Hollins can give an informed opinion because he is a NBA veteran. He knows more about basketball than I ever will. So that helps him. But in other sports, he can be out of his element. And I'm not saying that just because he's a basketball guy. For example, Jalen Rose is a dude who, who we know for basketball, but he's capable of being very interesting when talking about other topics like football. There are a ton of guys who did not play in the NFL who are capable of being very interesting um, in providing some very entertaining takes when it comes to football. Ryan Hollins, mm, not one of them. Uh, let's jump into his first video um, where, where they're talking about Baker Mayfield. You can't say zero concern. This is a guy who's never been before, been there before, and now he's the hunted. He spent his whole career essentially as a hunter, got the chip on his shoulder, always looking for something to prove, staring the stare down with his former head coach on the sidelines. That's who Baker is. And now as you bring up, you give him Baker, excuse me, you give him Odell Beckham? Bro, that's nothing but expectations. How do you meet that? How do you match that? What's his why? Yeah. What's his why? I mean, heck, a lot of people have the Browns going to the Super Bowl. A lot of people like that roster. Arguably, you can say, correct me if I'm wrong, the most talented roster in the NFL. What did he really just say? Like, what was his point? What was his argument? What was he trying to put together? Like, honestly, he talked for a while. I just don't know exactly what the point is. And that's the problem with the Ryan Hollins take. There's, there's too much going on. I get it. He's trying to make a hot take, but like, dude, it's I, I just don't get what he's trying to say. Like, maybe he's trying to say that Baker's always been the underdog, and now that his team's not the underdog, he'll have to adjust to expectations. My thing about this argument, though, even if that's what he was trying to do, which is not clear, which is the number one problem, um, if that's his argument, my rebuttal is Baker Mayfield played at Oklahoma. Are the expectations not increased at Oklahoma compared to a Texas Tech? Um, like everybody, when it comes to the Baker Mayfield narrative, they act like this dude just walked on and then just went and became the first pick of the draft. He played like three years at Oklahoma, each year playing better and better, raising expectations. He entered his last season with national championship expectations. And as a Heisman hopeful, there's not much more expectations you can get at a program like Oklahoma than that. Like he's dealt with high expectations before. People have been expecting great things from Baker Mayfield for like 
three years now because two years he was a star in college football and one year he was the number one pick in the draft. He is not the underdog. He has not been the underdog for like three, four years. But people just ignore that when they talk about Baker Mayfield and his story because it's kind of convenient for their take. Um, and, you know, that's just not true. So when it comes to Baker Mayfield and his expectations, I think you're going to have to come with a better argument than that. But let's jump into the next part. Baker when he Mayfield. was drafted number one, it, there were a slew of questions. Is he too small? How's he going to throw? How's he going to fit? Does he have enough? Heck, this is your head coach. You didn't believe. He can't, look, he came off of the bench. He didn't start. He didn't start. What week did he hop in there? So, nonetheless, this guy has been driving himself to success. As an athlete, you know it, Dom. You find your why. What's driving you? What's pushing you? What's motivating you? You have to find a way to be there. Yeah. The ba biggest thing about Tom Brady, he knows what a Super Bowl feels like. He knows how to prepare. He knows how to deal with adversity. Look, I mean, hey, 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 Max, we got to know this is not the next Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. He went there. He just went there. Oh, okay, before we get to the ridiculousness, that was that last sentence. I'm just trying to find out again, what is his point? It is like a game at this point. I'm trying to say that Baker won't become successful because Baker doesn't know what drives him and motivates him while simultaneously pointing out things that obviously motivated him in the past? Or is he trying to say that Baker Mayfield isn't gonna be successful because he doesn't have negativity to overcome? Which is one, not true, and two, huh? Like, honestly, your arguments need a thesis, dude. Dude, what about Baker Mayfield's resume says that he can't? Like, you know what I mean? Like. That's why the argument makes no sense. Like, he's just saying things. He's not accounting for the actual thing he's talking about in his take. He's just he's just saying things based off of, like, the first sentence in the headline. Also, let's address the whole Johnny Manziel. He has to prove he's not Johnny Manziel. Complete clown show. Complete clown show. He's done more in, like, four games than Johnny Manziel did in two years as a Cleveland Brown. His problems... If you even consider them bad, which I don't, um, aren't even in the same stratosphere of bad as Johnny Manziel. Like, are you kidding me? Like, this dude's still out here in 2019 with the whole Baker to prove he's no dirty football thing. Like, are you come clown? That's a clown. That's a clown take. That's a take I expect to hear from like a dude who watched like three football games in the last five years and just jumps into the conversation randomly at a supermarket. That is not a take I expect from a dude getting paid thousands of dollars to talk sports on ESPN. This is absolute clown stuff right there from Ryan Holland. And let's remember that the question is, what is the biggest concerns for the quarterback? this year like throughout that whole video that's the question that's the question being asked what is the biggest concern for baker mayfield this year and while there are logical ways to answer the question and be critical of baker mayfield i'm not saying you have to be positive but there are logical ways to answer that question in a productive manner but ryan hollins for whatever reason decided not to go with the actual on the field thing that he should be worried about like everybody else in this panel did he decided to go with can baker mayfield handle expectations Ooh. as if one having like high expectations for your team is like a bad thing like imagine that having expectations for what you're supposed to do like that's crazy um and let's face it for what it really is it's an argument that you could use without having have any numbers any facts any research behind your argument it is just something you can say and say is the case because you said so and you don't have to back it up with anything because it's a hypothetical argument and hypothetical arguments are literally the worst arguments because you can't win them and you can't end them so it doesn't matter that made me think, what, what is the tactic that Ryan Hollins uses? And then it reminded me of another guy I've covered a lot on this channel, Colin Coward. Now, Coward is much more skilled. He has facts, albeit skewed, but he has facts to back up his arguments. Um, and he does it in just a better, more entertaining, professional way than Ryan Hollins is. Right, right now, as a broadcaster, they don't hold a candle to each other. But, you know, Ryan Hollins tries to use what I like to call Colin Sense Arguments. They're arguments that sound like common sense arguments, but 
they're really just nonsensical arguments that ignore the reality of a situation in order to present something that they don't need any facts to back up. It's a hypothetical argument. It's a common sense argument. That is what Ryan Hollins is great at, making a whole bunch of common sense. Because he kind of tries to come off as like, hey guys, this is common sense. Like, how does nobody think of this? But it's like, Nobody's thinking of this because he's already proven he can handle expect. He was the first pick of the draft last year. He broke the rookie touchdown record. Are there not expectations that come with being the number one overall pick in the draft, Ryan Hollins? Or does he still have to prove he can handle high expectations? Like, come on, man. Like, Ryan Hollins acts like in this argument that Baker Mayfield, he didn't walk on to Oklahoma. Like, he walked on to the Browns and just made the team as an undrafted rookie and then just had a great year with nobody expecting anything from him. He was the first pick of the draft. What are you talking about, Ryan? But let's jump into this next video. And this is a video where he's talking about Odell Beckham. Let's see if he has some better material, some more researched and nuanced takes for this you know, topic because Odell Beckham, he's one of the biggest players in the NFL. You know, I surely Ryan Hollins has something really informative to say about the topic. This weekend, and you know, guys, he really doesn't seem too worried about the Browns' newest star receiver. So, should the Browns be more concerned about Odell Beckham than the Steelers? Hey, hey, look, that's good for Ryan Hollins. He is writing stuff down, which means, man, he obviously he's going to say something good here, man. I, I, I can't wait for what he's about to say. <laughs> Go ahead, Ryan. Look, man. Should the Look. Browns be more concerned about or worried about Odell Beckham Jr. than the Steelers? I think this is a trick question, <laughs> but let me hear this. Do you have look, any look, look, man, for look, me? man. It's got to be the Browns. Oh, my God. If you're thinking about Odell Beckham, no one questions his talent, Max. No one questions his talent. But it, it, what is going to happen when something goes wrong, if he's not getting the ball, if he's double teamed, uh, if Baker's not making the plays that he should make? There's a lot of expectations behind the Browns this season. And the one thing we've known Odell more for this last season is not his talent, it's his talk. It's everything off the field. Every incident, uh, whether he's kicking the goalposts, where he's making public statements, uh, you know, criticizing his quarterback. And hear me when I say this. I don't think Odell has said anything wrong. But when you're in a locker room, whether it be NFL, NBA, MLB, whatever it may be, once you speak out publicly, it's out there and you can't get it back. And it ultimately led to him being moved. And I understand the talent he is, but if he brings that same attitude to the Browns, he's got to show me, he's got to show everybody, he's got to show the Browns that he is a different player and those same issues won't be there. Again, for the third time, what was he trying to say? What did he actually say? What was his point in the argument? Like he said so many buzzy things and contrary to what popular belief is, but like, what did you actually say? Like, what is your point? What is your argument here? What are you setting up here that you're gonna back up with like, you know, facts? <laughs> and that, that's, that's the issue. That's the, that's the issue. He just says ridiculous stuff about sports topics, which is fine, but he has nothing of substance to back up what he says. So it just sounds like a dude saying crazy stuff. That's what it sounds like. It just sounds like a dude saying whatever. They almost seem freestyle. Like he's just coming off the dome with these hot takes, but they're not, they're not. He prepares this. Like he worked on this. And if you don't believe me, look at all them notes on that desk. Ryan Hollins really is putting in work. And that's the thing that like kind of makes me mad at ESPN for throwing him out there. This dude is just obviously not ready to be on first take because Ryan Hollins is not dumb. He can't be dumb. And let me be clear. It is not the hot takes that, that bug me at this point. It is the amount of work as a viewer I have to put into deciphering what the hell he was trying to say. That is the issue here. But let's remember, we're trying to hear Ryan Hollins explain how Odell Beckham, a top five wide receiver, is more of a problem for the Browns, the team he plays on, than the Steelers, the team he'll play two times this year. And as stupid as the thought of that argument sounds, let's continue. Guys, you, you got to be kidding me that if anybody's having the notion here that you don't have the responsibility as a star in the league to not if just get out and produce, but be a model citizen. And I love the way but he's Odell... not. He's not. You said a model citizen. What has Odell done if he's not a model citizen, right? He ain't won nothing. 
<laughs> okay, so the exchange was, he's not a model citizen. And then Keyshawn said, how is he not a model citizen? What has Odell Beckham done to not prove he's a model citizen? And Ryan Hollins basically told him in response to how is Odell not a model citizen? Ryan Hollins said, because he ain't got no rings. <laughs> what, dude? So you heard it here first. If you haven't won a major professional championship in your sport, you are a terrible person. So take that in. Thank you, Ryan Hollins, for that information. Um, because I would have gone through life thinking I was a decent person. But now I know that because I ain't got no rings, I am a terrible person and a bad citizen. Thank you. Now I'm aware. And again, I know I talked about it right before we jumped into the clip, but can we address how stupid this question is? Like, we got three people debating whether Odell Beckham is a bigger problem for the Browns, the team he plays for. Odell Beckham. The dude who, like last year, people were comparing to Jerry Rice. The guy who still had a 1,000 yards and did not play a complete season last year and was catching balls from Eli Manning's skeleton. Odell Beckham. Is he a bigger problem for the Browns than he is the Steelers? The team that has a bad secondary that's going to most likely have to throw either Joe Hayden or Artie Burns at Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. Are you kidding me? What team should be more worried? And two people out of this three people panel are legitimately saying, oh yeah, the Browns have more to worry about. This is like literally the best example of like w the worst things about shows like First Take or, you know, these, these heavily, these debate shows. You know, most of the time they're very entertaining. They're at least nice things to have on the background. You know, they're, they're harmless. Like it gets to a point to where it's not even a sports debate show. It's a hypothetical debate because at no point does anybody bring up the Steelers defense in this conversation. At no point does anybody bring up any on the field thing on this conversation. It's all hypothetical points that people are making. Which like, what is the point of watching a debate about that? Like talk about the sport, have some numbers, engage me in that way. But they don't, they just they just talk about nonsense for 20 minutes and go to commercial break. I'm not asking these guys to break down film and all that. Like stop giving me these like basic, easy to do because you don't have to research them hypothetical takes. Give me some real stuff that shows me you actually care about the topic that you're talking about. All right, all right, that's it. That's all the Ryan Hollins arguments I can handle. Um, and I just wanna ask everybody, what do we learn? But I think what we learn in my opinion is that, you know, it's easy to have something that sounds like a hot take, but actually having a hot take, that takes a lot more skill than we realize. And it's no clearer than when a guy like Ryan Hollins attempts to have a hot take on national TV. Sure, am I a fan of Colin Coward? No. Do I like what Colin Coward has to say 90% of the time? No. Do I almost always disagree with him on principle? Yes. But do I have to admit that he is skilled at what he does? That when he has a hot take, he at least attempts to back it up with some kind of semblance of logic and facts? Yes. And while you can disagree with those guys, you can have an actual argument. You can engage in an argument with those guys because they're skilled at what they do. A dude like Ryan Hollins, you can't even argue with because you don't even know what he's trying to say. It doesn't make sense. It just sounds like hot take throw up. And honestly, I don't even blame Ryan Hollins. He is obviously not ready to be in this situation, but people keep putting him out there because they realize that since he makes such bad arguments, people just dislike him and that probably drives up engagement and they think he's doing like a Colin Coward thing, but it's not the same. It's not gonna last as long. They put him out there when he wasn't ready and this is what defined Ryan Hollins, right? Like these bad takes, these things where he's out of his element, these things where he just doesn't sound like he knows what he's talking about are gonna end up defining Ryan Hollins. Like, and I don't want that for Ryan Hollins. He seems like a good guy. He's smart, he's very hardworking. Like, he just needs to probably be somewhere. He probably needs more experience where he's gonna be less exposed. These debate shows aren't good for a guy like Ryan Hollins at the point that he's at. Cause I know if I were put in his situation, I'd probably sound like an idiot too. So while I know and thoroughly went through every single reason why Ryan Hollins is just like bad and not good at what he does. 
why do you think ESPN just keeps throwing him out there? And that's going to be the question I'm going to ask in the comment section. Let me know. Why do you think ESPN is so persistent in throwing Ryan Hollins out there for us to watch? Is it because he just says things that sound controversial? They think that's going to be good. It's going to be a hot take. That people are going to watch that. Or is it something else? Um, let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts are. And again, guys, Patreon members and people who want to be a Patreon member, please consider joining the Patreon so you can have your name on this ticker bar. And also, you will be eligible for the Patreon-only Fantasy Football League. Yes, you could play Fantasy Football with me and probably destroy my team because I am terrible. If that sounds like fun, that sounds like something you want to do, join the Patreon, send me a message once you do that you're interested in joining the league. I'll write your name down. And once I start the league, I will start to contact everybody. The deadline to sign up is August. 10th so let me know before august 10th and you should be in the league but that's going to be it for this week's video if you really like what i had to say please hit that like button hit that subscribe button and ding that notification bell so you can be notified when i upload and the season's about to start so you're going to want to be notified because these videos are going to start coming out and it's going to be it's going to be go time for us nfl football fans um but again guys thank you for watching have a great day and have a good night